Hi, welcome to the show. Financial scams, such a big and important topic that it actually takes two shows for us to cover. And of course, we can't cover everything, but I want to help you with some of the most important parts of protecting your finances from financial scams. Now, the truth is, there are a lot of good people out there, good quality financial advisors that can help you. But what you're going to learn on this program is it's not just financial advisors to watch out for. So, we're going to talk about some of the ways to protect yourself. We're going to talk about the hideouts from financial scammers, the places you can invest and that you can put your money that make it a lot harder for the financial scammers to get to you. So please be careful, but stick around, watch the program, and you will be a more informed consumer and investor and be more knowledgeable about how to protect yourself. Stick around. While Bernie Madoff's $50 billion scam dominated the headlines, you know, there's still a lot of other scams that occurred that were equally decimating to the finances of the victims. And I've pulled a few just to share with you and help you understand a couple things about how these scams are occurring. Let's take a quick look at this chart. We have a $300 million, a $600 million, an $800 million, and a billion dollar scam from Perlman, Slatkin, Lombardi, and Rothstein. Scam artists that you may never have heard of. So these scams occur all the time, and we've got to keep our guard up. So let me share with you a little bit about each one. First, Lou Perlman. Now, you may have heard of him. He is a music mogul, and he used his celebrity fame working with musicians to defraud investors and major banks out of $300 million. He used two sham companies, Transcontinental Airlines and Transcontinental Airlines Travel, to create the opportunity for the scam and he basically pitched to the investors that they would earn a high rate of interest on their money that was only available to large corporations. Actually the money was used to fund Mr. Perlman's lifestyle. Next up, Reed Slatkin, the Minister Money Manager. Mr. Slatkin operated a $600 million Ponzi scheme involving some 800 clients. He created the illusion and the allure of 24% annual returns, when in fact that money was being used to pay for his lifestyle. Jets, cars, artwork, you name it. And uh, it was his 10-year period as an ordained minister in the Church of Scientology that created an opportunity for him to scam friends and other members of his church. Next up, Peter Lombardi, the mutual benefit mathematician. This gentleman defrauded 28,000 investors out of over $800 million. How did he do it? Well, the company he owned, Mutual Benefit Corporation, bought existing life insurance policies from elderly clients, and then he resold them to other investors. The problem, though, was he grossly underestimated their life expectancy, and so that was part of the scam. He and his accomplices siphoned off millions of dollars in, quote-unquote, consulting fees. And last but not least, Scott Rothstein, the larcenous lawyer, a billion dollar scam. He created a Ponzi scheme. He offered wealthy investors the opportunity to participate in sexual harassment lawsuits. And of course, here again, a pitch of a large gain, 20% in as little as six months time. The settlements were all fake, they were forged, and he siphoned off that billion dollar scam. So the lesson, from these four scams, and there are many more out there, and we've got to keep our guard up, the lesson is that they can involve non-financial people. We hear about the ones related to financial advisors or investors or other people in the financial industry, but they can occur across all walks of life. For more information regarding financial planning services or to schedule an appointment, please call 888-747-PLAN or visit us at davidholland.com. 
Are you prepared for possible inflation? What about the next stock market drop? Seven Deadly Sins identifies some of the most common mistakes David has seen retirees make and how to avoid them. To request your free copy today, call 888-747-PLAN. Are there specific places I can put my money where it is less likely to fall into the wrong hands? This is probably one of the most important questions that needs to be answered in personal finance. The simple truth is if you have money, the scammers want to get a hold of it. So you've got to seek shelter. You've got to get a hideout from the scammers. So I have for you the three hideouts from financial scammers. Banks, credit unions insurance companies, and investment custodians. Each of them can be a place to seek shelter from the scammers. And with those places, you can pretty much get everything you need to do the kind of work for your finances that needs to be done. So let's take a look at how these different institutions can help protect your nest egg. First, insurance companies are regulated and monitored by their state. They're audited annually by independent accounting firms. And investment custodians are also heavily regulated, monitored and audited by FINRA and the SEC, regulatory bodies that govern the financial sector. And banks are regulated and monitored by their state and FDIC, who guarantees their deposits up to $250,000. Now, depending on what you're looking for, I think you can accomplish these objectives by working with one of these institutions. So let's look at some of the common objectives people have in putting their monies with banks insurance companies, and investment custodians. First up, let's say you're looking for principal protection. A bank offers checking, money market, and certificates of deposit. Insurance company offers fixed annuities, and investment custodians, not so much, unless you got a brokered CD. But by and large, they usually don't offer that type of product inside an investment custodial account. Now, if you're looking simply to make interest on your money, Again, banks and credit unions, that's a lot of what they do. Money market and CDs. Again, with the insurance companies, we have the opportunity with fixed annuities to earn interest. And investment custodians offer bonds or bond mutual funds. And if you're looking for a lifetime of income, we got a no for banks and credit unions and no from investment custodians because really the only place that you can get a true guaranteed lifetime of income is from an insurance company by way of an immediate annuity or a fixed annuity. And if you're looking for stock market investments, well, not so much with banks. Insurance companies do offer, though, variable annuities, which give you the opportunity to have growth inside of the annuity contract. And investment custodians, now we're talking their language. Stocks, mutual funds. And if you're looking to make a fortune overnight, no to banks and credit unions, no to insurance companies. But again, this is the, the territory of investment custodians. IPOs, options, margin, barbell, dumbbells, all kinds of exotic stuff is available inside the investment custodial account. The key thing to remember with all of these hideout opportunities is this helps to protect you from the scammer. You still need to make sure though that you're getting good financial advice. Do you know that your long-term care could be covered using a life insurance or annuity hybrid? This type of product often allows for the assets to be used tax-free for long-term care expenses or as a death benefit for your beneficiaries. If you decide that you no longer want the policy, many companies will even give the unused premium back to you. So be sure to ask your advisor what long-term care options are available to you. Do you ever wonder what the best retirement income strategy is for your situation? With so many financial products and services available, you may find it overwhelming to choose the right one. Retirement Income Strategies discusses some of the common income planning strategies used by retirees and baby boomers. To request your free copy today, call 888-747-PLAN. Exchange traded funds, or ETFs, are similar to mutual funds in that they hold several stocks and or bonds, but they trade intraday like a stock, which makes them a more nimble investment option than a mutual fund. They also tend to have lower expense ratios than mutual funds, so they may be a good addition to your investment portfolio.
Uh, I don't know, that's a tough one to answer. Well, uh, the one I remember is the one out of New York, Bernie Madoff, who did quite a job on a lot of people. Are you including politicians and uh, evangelists? I think the people that sell timeshare. I think they're the biggest scam artists. Some of these door-to-door -door salesmen. There's quite a few of them I can think of. But one I really don't like is when people try to get the older people to get their money. They don't realize that they're being scammed. And to me, that is the most worst thing of all. There are hundreds of annuities available in today's marketplace. How can you know if one is right for you? In this educational booklet, David Holland provides a plain English explanation of the different types of annuities, so you can decide if one is a good fit for your situation. To request your free copy today, call 888-747-PLAN. Are you prepared for possible inflation? What about the next stock market drop? Seven Deadly Sins identifies some of the most common mistakes David has seen retirees make and how to avoid them. To request your free copy today, call 888-747-PLAN. The best advice I can give anybody to help to protect themselves against uh, scams and identity theft and things like this is never provide any information to them whatsoever and they will make you believe and they are very good at it they will make you believe that they need this information to provide something for you if it's such a great deal that person is not going to go away they're going to recontact you or they're going to give you a legitimate number to call back if they're not legitimate they're going to probably hang up on you as soon as you tell them that you want their phone number their name and phone number and they'll contact them because they're at that point they know they're wasting their time and they've got other people to, to go fish for. So as soon as you tell them that, if you hear the phone click, that's a good indication that, that it was a scam. But if they're willing, sometimes it could be legit, and they're willing to give you valid information, they will be there the following day and, uh, to make it happen. But more than likely, they're not going to give you, if they do give you a name, it's going to be phony. If they give you a business name, it's going to be phony. And you'll never hear from them again. First and foremost, you never commit to anything when they first call you. Seek out a professional before you make any decisions that will take money out of your pocket or property away from you. Confessions of a Financial Planner is an innovative book series on the world of personal finance. Secrets to a Secure Retirement answers your questions about money honestly and directly. You won't find industry jargon, difficult theories, or condescending commentary. How to get great advice and avoid financial scams is a how-to guide on selecting the right financial professional for you while avoiding financial scams. These books will give you the knowledge and power to begin building your financial future. To order your copy today, call 888-747-PLAN. The next issue we need to deal with is identity theft, one of the fastest growing crimes in the country. Over a million people have had a, over a billion dollars stolen from them through identity theft, according to the United States Postal Service's Delivering Trust campaign. Now, it's interesting because identity theft is its still a very significant risk, but what makes it different than the scam is that with a scam you are a more active participant because you choose to put your money into something or you so that sounds good to me here let me give you my money but with an identity theft it may happen when you don't even know and you don't really need to do anything to cause it to happen what happens is the criminals get a hold of your personal information they get your social security number your name your address your telephone number your date of birth and with that information they can pretend to be you now, there are over 25 different types of financial identity fraud investigated each year by the United States Secret Service. This is a serious issue. In fact, 94% of the 10,000 financial crime arrests made by the Secret Service in 1997 involved identity theft, and those numbers continue to grow today. In some of these cases, the thieves stole the victim's identity in order not only to perpetuate whatever computer or cyber crime, but also organized crime, drug trafficking, 
alien smuggling and money laundering. It's bad enough to have your identity stolen that causes you to lose money. But can you imagine being convicted of a crime or charged with a crime that you didn't even commit? So this is a very serious topic. Now, with stealing your information, how does that happen? How do they get your personal information? Well, some basic stuff. Number one, they get it out of your unsecured mailbox. You know, you put the little flag up and they see that and they steal what's in your mailbox. Trash cans, dumpsters, gosh, you've got to shred everything these days. Pen numbers at the ATM, they look over your shoulder. Copies of checks or deposit slips. Here's a really interesting one. Waiters or clerks that copy or memorize your credit card or take a picture of it with their iPhone. An inside man steals information from employees at a company or an accomplice taking information from hospital records or lender files, the person who works there temporarily, just to get access to this information. So they also ask for the information. This is what's really amazing is they will pick up the phone and call you. They'll request your social security number or other information that they really don't need in a transaction at a store. You know, give me your telephone number, give me your social, give me, you know, your height, your weight, your data, all this other stuff that really isn't part of buying the, you know, whatever it is at the store. They can call and pretend to be from a credit card company or a bank or other financial institution and they need to verify your information. Well, they'll never, a legitimate institution doesn't ever call you for that. They'll also send you bogus email or direct you to a fake website and ask you to again enter information. They're after all of that personal information that gives them what they need to pretend to be you. And so we've got to be very, very careful to be on the lookout for this. Now, knowing this information, knowing what they do and how they do it, you can take specific steps to address this. And that's what we're going to cover in the next segment. There are hundreds of annuities available in today's marketplace. How can you know if one is right for you? In this educational booklet, David Holland provides a plain English explanation of the different types of annuities, so you can decide if one is a good fit for your situation. To request your free copy today, call 888-747-PLAN. Are you prepared for possible inflation? What about the next stock market drop? Seven Deadly Sins identifies some of the most common mistakes David has seen retirees make and how to avoid them. To request your free copy today, call 888-747-PLAN. What are some measures I can take to protect myself against someone stealing my identity? This identity theft issue is a serious thing. So what do you do about it? What can you do to protect yourself? The criminals are never going to stop, so you've got to take action. First, you can shred any documents that have got your name on it. Anything that comes to you in the mail, or that is sent to you, you need to shred it when you're done with it. And if you've got statements, you've looked at them, you don't need to keep all of them. Banks, insurance companies, investment firms, you need to talk to the financial professional about which ones you need to keep. And you just don't want anything laying around or in a drawer somewhere that if somebody breaks in your house, they can get all this information. Next, make sure that no one's around when you use your ATM card. Cover up the keypad as you enter in the information. Don't write your PIN number on your ATM card. And don't put your PIN number in your wallet. You want to take some common sense steps to keep people from being able to access your ATM and your account balance. Next, you can also have your name removed from all the telemarketing lists. That's all done through the, the credit reference checks. And so you can ask that your name be removed so that so much stuff doesn't come in the mail with solicitations for whatever it may be, credit card offers and the like. Because with that mail, somebody might be able to steal your identity. Next, pay attention to your credit card. I often tell people, treat it like it's a thousand dollar bill. Don't let it out of your sight. Be very careful because a waiter or waitress could maybe write down the number 
take a picture of it with their iPhone. There's things that can be done that can cause you to lose control over that and never, never give your number out over the phone. Next, your social security number. You've got to protect it. Don't give it out or any other personal information for that matter for any transaction unless it's absolutely essential. You know, if you're buying something in a store for cash and they say, well, we need your social security number and date of birth, you're kidding me, right? They don't need all that. So be, be aware and be careful and think about the transaction that you are doing and whether or not the information they're asking for is really necessary. The next thing that we need to protect is your mail. And I'm talking about outgoing and incoming. So for incoming mail, I'm a big believer of having a P.O. box or an actual mailbox that will lock so that they can't get to your mail. Outgoing, do not put your mail in the mailbox and then raise that red flag. You might as well raise a white flag and surrender to the identity thieves. Better yet, you need to put your mail that goes out in a locked mailbox. And if you don't have one, make sure you find one in your area and just drop it off in there once a week or whatever it is. Be careful with your mail. It's one of the easiest ways an identity thief can get your information. Next, be very careful when you shop online. This can't be stressed enough. Never, never click a link inside an email to go to a merchant or your credit card company. Always open up a new window and retype in the address so that you know you're going to that specific site directly. Emails can be very easily faked and they may send you off to a whole, wholly uh, fictitious account or location. They're after your information. Review your credit card every month. Look at those statements carefully. Make sure you are familiar with every charge because that could be a sign that your identity has been compromised. Here's a big one. Passwords. Don't use obvious passwords. Don't use the last four digits of your social security number. Don't use your date of birth. Be careful with pet names and things like that. Sometimes identity theft is committed by somebody you know, and they know your dog is, is spot, okay? So be careful how you name these passwords, and you've got to change them from time to time to maintain your security. Also, take advantage probably once a year of these free credit reports that are available. Go in, look to see if any new accounts have been opened up, make sure it's all stuff that you authorize and that you know about. And it's a good time to go and clean house a little bit if there's an account that you haven't used for a while. You can reevaluate whether or not you want to keep it open. So we have all of these individual steps that you can take to protect yourself. And it will make a difference. But what we're trying to do is to create a wall to protect your identity and also to protect your finances. The thieves are out there. You've got to take active steps to make sure they can't get your information. Confessions of a Financial Planner is an innovative book series on the world of personal finance. Secrets to a Secure Retirement answers your questions about money honestly and directly. You won't find industry jargon, difficult theories, or condescending commentary. How to get great advice and avoid financial scams is a how-to guide on selecting the right financial professional for you while avoiding financial scams. These books will give you the knowledge and power to begin building your financial future. To order your copy today, call 888-747-PLAN. Want to learn more? Visit us at realmoneyshow.com. Email your questions, comments, or show ideas to Ellen at realmoneyshow.com. Be sure to visit us on Facebook at Real Money with David Holland and follow us on Twitter at Real Money Show. I know that we're focusing on scams and how to avoid them on the show, but I want to really come back to something that I think is fundamental and you're going to hear me talk a lot about, but I, I, I can't overemphasize the need for getting planning done. I meet with people on a regular basis that have made the smart decision to address their financial planning and what's going to happen down the road. So I've seen people and I've talked to people that are trying to figure out this current environment we're in, which is very frustrating. A volatile market, yes, it looks like it's doing better, but it's still a lot of people that are skeptical. And we also have a very low interest rate environment for savers and people that are trying to live off of what they've accumulated during their working years. So in that environment, I know you are wondering, how do I get this right? Well, I just met with a couple and, and that was the question. They're trying to decide when to retire, how much will they be able to get from the assets that they've accumulated, 
and how they'll get it to work for them, not only for today, but for tomorrow. Now, a lot of people, they want to get this right, but they end up um, taking a kind of a basic approach. And, and they try to do the things they can to get their finances right, but they don't have the tools. And so a lot of times people will have their financial planning on a napkin. I mean, they sketch out what they think will happen or what they will need to do. And I want to tell you that you'll get a lot further if you actually put a plan together. And you know, this is a nice big thick plan that we do for our clients. Doing the planning is what it really boils down to. You've got to do three things. If I summarize what needs to be done, number one, you've got to address the threats. We're talking about scams, that's a threat. But there are a lot of other threats that need to be dealt with. You've got to first address those. Then, once you've done that, you can focus on creating income that will meet your needs now and in the future because we know inflation is going to be an issue. And after you've taken care of those two things, then you can make sure that you have your assets and your planning done to make sure this money goes to your beneficiaries. So that's it. Those are really the three things that need to happen. Now, there's a lot of work that needs to be done, but please understand this. You, unless you are a financial planner yourself and you like watching my show, uh, you really don't have the tools or maybe all of the knowledge that you will need to accomplish these things. There's things that you just don't know that need to be done and you don't have the tools to put a plan together that addresses all these things. So threats, building the income, and leaving money to your beneficiaries. That's what financial planning is about. Financial scams and identity theft, double trouble. It's some serious stuff. It happens every day. It happens to people you know. It is expensive. It can be devastating. But here's what's most important about all of this. You can take steps. You can be active in protecting yourself. You can reduce your chances of being a victim. But you've got to be active. You've got to take those steps. So please do that. Please be on guard. And I hope what we've talked about in today's show is helpful to you. And remember, nobody cares more about your money than you do.